Reporter Marcela Bayeto traveled to Tijuana, Mexico, a border town that's become an unexpected host city for many of these families. Marcela? These families are now following what the Department of Homeland Security calls the Migrant Protection Protocols. They're more commonly known as the Remain in Mexico program, a U.S. immigration policy change that now requiring migrants seeking asylum to wait in Mexico while their case is processed. According to DHS, this policy was put in place to reduce the number of those taking advantage of the immigration system while ensuring protections for populations it deems as vulnerable. Now, we headed down to Tijuana, Mexico to see how this policy is forcing thousands of families into a state of uncertainty that is taking its toll. Because of safety and security concerns on their behalf, Cronkite News is not showing their faces or using their names. Yo soy de Guatemala. De Ecuador. De Honduras. One by one, the children remember where they're fleeing from. This migrant shelter in Tijuana is the Madre Asunta Institute, run by Catholic nuns. Here, they get a place to sleep, food, childcare, and a safe location to remain in as they go through the lengthy legal process of petitioning for asylum in the United States. Many of those here say they are fleeing their home countries because of violence, extreme poverty, and abuse. Salí de mi país. Más por mi hijo. Si yo estuviera sola, no me importa lo que me hagan. Pero yo sí necesito protegerle a mi hijo. Livia is from Ecuador. She says she left her home country with her eight-year-old son due to religious persecution. Me pegaron. Yo estaba embarazada. Perdí a mi hijo que estuve embarazada. With a year's worth of savings and travel plans arranged, Livia and her son began the dangerous journey of making their way into the United States. After weeks of traveling, Livia says they arrived near the San Luis port of entry and decided to cross. Agarré a mi hijo. Digo, vamos. Hoy nos vamos al otro lado. But any hope they had of making it to the other side quickly disappeared. They were apprehended by Border Patrol and deported back to Mexico. Livia says they didn't know of the recent changes made in U.S. immigration policy regarding asylum. And she's not alone. Many of the women in the shelter telling Cronkite News they never heard of the changes before leaving their home countries, ending up in a place like Madre Asunta. This is one of the dormitories that women and their children sleep in. And according to one of the coordinators, there's around 90 people sleeping staying here at this shelter right now. The shelter's capacity is just 45 beds, but there have been up to 150 women and children staying here at any given time. Todo es de manera gratuita, no tiene ningún costo. Y el tiempo que se pueden quedar aquí es varía. Tengo 17 días, me han tratado muy bien, se me dan las tres comidas, um, habitación para dormir y ropa y calzado si necesitamos. The shelter is made up of a series of buildings connected via stairs and passageways. Stacks of clothes, suitcases, and supplies go from floor to ceiling, while each woman has a daily assigned chore. <laughs> Dinner time usually consists of donated food. On this night, bean and bread sandwiches were served. The courtyard turns into a makeshift playground while still wet hand-washed clothes cover most of the railings. While at the shelter, Sister Limas says the women also get access to lawyers, psychologists, and social workers to help them process their emotional trauma and navigate a complicated immigration legal process. Cada vez que las mujeres van a corte y son regresadas, su autoestima, su, su salud emocional, su salud mental, toda llega así como que... Por los suelos. Aside from the physical border wall, Lima says there is an even harder barrier to overcome for those who have never been in a situation like these women and children. No importa que se coloquen muchos muros, no importa que se coloquen muchas guardias nacionales, muchas paredes, los migrantes que ahorita están en esta frontera, al muro que más difícil que se están enfrentando es al muro de la indiferencia y de la invisibilidad. Desde que la primera vez me pegaron, él no está estudiando. Eso pensaba, decía, si puedo irme a otro país, mi hijo va a poder estudiar. Knowing what she knows now, Livia says she never would have left Ecuador risking it all. Digo, ¿por qué tuve que hacer esto? 
y viene, me arrepiento que por qué me vine. While these families wait, the Trump administration is adding more asylum regulations and changes. Right now, they're looking at a new rule which would have migrants crossing through Guatemala, El Salvador, or Honduras first claim asylum in one of those countries before being able to seek asylum in the U.S. This is in addition to the already existing Remain in Mexico program and another policy that makes immigrants ineligible for asylum if they did not claim asylum in any of the countries they passed while on their way to the U.S. In the studio, Marcel Bayero, Cronkite News.